So let's have a look at the first camera. We're going to look at some compact digital, uh, compact 35 millimeter cameras tonight. Pentax PC 35 AFM. What does that look like? Whoa. Let's turn the music down. It's still in its original box. That must add a couple of pennies to the, uh, to the value of it. Let's see what we get inside the box now. An original instruction book, which uh, these days is probably more valuable than the camera. Uh, what else have we got? <gasps> Join Britain's ace of clubs, the Pentax Club. Three months free membership if you pay by standing order. How much does it cost to join the Pentax Club? Wow. Um, <laughs> wow, you get all this stuff. Technical advice. Privileged insurance maintenance and servicing schemes. Club travel. Wow. Pentax photo trips. All this and more for just £9.95. Now, back in the day, when this came out, this is like 1983 or something, or 84, 85, Nine pounds ninety-five was uh, was a considerable sum of money, and it looks like whoever owned this camera did not avail of the Pentax Club. Ah, uh, look, there's a look, look, look. They've got an address as well, one four three Hersham Road, Walton on Thames, Surrey. Surrey. That's just some guy's house, probably. Okay, turns out it's not some guy's house. It's an industrial estate with a Tesco Metro and an MOT center, no Pentax club, I'm afraid, but you, they did used to give out these cool little badges, so carry on. What else have we got in here? Oh, true print. Ah, oh, look at this. This is how you, uh, yes, triple print, bloody hell. Three prints, buy one print, get two free. You uh, basically would uh, pop your pop your finished film into this one of these prepaid envelopes and send it off. Would you put actual money into the envelope? I don't know. Um, Hmm. Oh no, it's a check. You're supposed to put a check in there with this, and your prints would come back by return of post. I'm not entrusting my film to that for uh, ever. <laughs> so what have we got inside here? Yes, here is the Pentax. Now it does look, I don't know, it looks, it looks a little bit like your kind of stealth technology in a way. It's got that kind of angular, that angular kind of... Uh, 80s I don't know what look <laughs> and uh, yeah the reason there's tape on here and there's going to be tape on another one as well uh, the reason for all of that is that the battery cover is always either breaking or snapping off or um, otherwise misbehaving so I've had to tape it down uh, otherwise the thing works right as you can see it's got autofocus it's, uh, if you turn this, if you pop this out, whoa, boing, here's your lens. F3, uh, no, wait a minute, 35 mil, uh, one to what, 2.8. Okay, so the, um, yeah, the widest opening the uh, thing goes is F2.8 and says seven, 0 0.7 meters to infinity. So yeah, you've got to get at least 70 centimeters away from your subject. Not too bad. Down here on the bottom, you select your ISO. It takes uh, 100, 200, 400, and 1,000. Hmm, no 800. That's funny. To rewind, you have to, I think it's got a double system here where you've got to put that up and you've got to push that in. Oh, it's making noises. Let's have a... Let's have a... Okay. I don't actually have... I don't actually have any film in here, so I don't know when it's going to stop. Maybe it just goes on for uh, for a certain amount of time. Maybe it carries on forever until it reaches what it thinks is the end of the uh, end of the thing, end of the uh, roll. It's not stopping. It's it is on a mission. It is on a mission to uh, rewind this film that does not actually exist. So let's just open it and see what happens. It's still going. Oh dear. Look, see that? I don't know if it's going to stop. It may just keep going. It may just keep rewinding and rewinding until, I don't know, until I switch it off. Huh. Well, maybe I should switch it off. All right, I'll shut that again. 
Okay, the amazing rewindable camera that never stops rewinding. Let's uh, shut that. No, it didn't stop. Oh dear, what have I done? Oh, bloody Am I going to have to take the batteries out? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. It went until I switched this back. So you switch it this way. It just rewinds and it keeps rewinding forever until you put it back and it stops rewinding. Huh. Interesting. Okay, I guess when it finishes it must. Maybe it has a, a, a stop thing anyway. So, does this thing have a flash? Hmm. It has a little knob on the side that says flash. There's a knob on the side and when you push that down, what happens? Boink! Flash comes up. So let's see if it works. Flash film, here we come. That's the most analog sound ever. That that noise. Let's have it again. Go on, let's, let's go back to 1985 here. I'm going to turn the volume right up. Okay, here we go. Here's one for your Foley artists. If you're making a film about the 80s and you want to dub on some 80s sounds, some camera sounds. Here we go. Three, two, one. I'm very happy I can still hear that because it means I haven't got old enough to, uh, to not... Um, be able to uh, hear high-pitched sounds. It's got a self-timer. It has a strange bunch of features which just sort of randomly dotted around the camera. Here's your uh, picture uh, picture number. That's how far we've got. There's only one number every two pictures number. So we're on picture six and picture seven is obviously between six and eight. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, over here on the top, backlight plus 1.5. Well, that's always handy, isn't it? Okay, if you push the backlight in like that, then it just comes back. I think it just opens up the... Uh, in fact, let's see, if it, let's see if we can see that happening if I do the backlight. Let's get a really, really close up into the lens itself. Okay, right. There's the lens. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the backlight thing. Ah, uh, nothing. Well, maybe it works. Who knows? We'll have to put some film into it. The uh, Pentax PC35 AFM. Pretty straightforward, really. Next camera, Canon Sure Shot. What have we here? A Canon Sure Shot. Here it is, and it's also in its original box. Beautiful, very nice. The only thing that's not very nice, if we open this up, see those little uh, black flecks there? See those black flecks there? Yeah, that is a nasty fake leatherette coming off this nasty Canon camera bag. And it gets everywhere. Looks all over the inside of the thing here. Oh, look, some silica gel. Let's see what it... Let's see that. I like silica gel packets. What does that say? Uh, okay, it says uh, desiccant. Do not eat desiccant silica gel. For the method... For method of moisture-proof packaging, do not eat again desiccant silica gel for method of... Okay, it probably just goes on that. I think we got the message. We're not supposed to eat that stuff. Yeah, they're right, though. It doesn't taste very nice. So inside the box and inside this disgusting bag, we have ourselves the Canon Sure Shot with the Canon lens, 38 millimeter, 1 to 2.8. Let's switch it on. This it switches on through this uh, button here on the, t on the side. Oh, I love that sound. Let's do that again. Right. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, it's a nice version, ni a nice few clicks and whirs and clunk, clunks. Okay, and uh, does it does it take a picture? Let's take a picture and see. Another nice sound. Let's do it again. Nice. And the flash? Can we get can we persuade the flash to come on? Yes, we can. Just look. Here, uh, there's a sign on the back here. You've got this, it says flash on. Simple enough. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that thing just popped right up. And let's have another picture, another non picture. It didn't flash. Okay. Maybe it's, uh, oh, I know, it probably thinks there's, too, there's enough light. So let's cover the, uh, cover the eyes of it here, the light meter bit, see if it flashes this time. It did. Oh, let's do that one more time, just for the sound. Oh, 
beautiful noise. <laughs> now, um, what have we got? What have we got here? Well, it's uh, pretty simple. You can switch the flash on like that. When you're not using it, you put it down on top. Ah, it's the rewind. So you push that unlock in and slide this and it ought to start rewinding. It probably is not rewinding because it somehow it knows that there's no film inside it. Here's our uh, shutter, uh, our uh, film counter. There it goes. Now, does it does it count up? No, no, it's not to be fooled. It doesn't. It knows there's no film in there, so it's not advancing that. At least I hope that's the deal. And uh, what other? What else do you have? Oh, look, you've got an ASA thing at the top here. It says, where, how do you change that? Look, there's a set to 200. There's a switch on the bottom of the lens. But I don't see a switch on there. It's on the bottom of the tells lens. You where to change the ASA. Right there, right there. Oh, you missed it. I think it just knows when you put film into it. No, it doesn't. Look uh, under the lens, you idiot. Do I turn this? No. No. Do I, there's no lever or switch. I think Yes, there just, is. When you put the film in, it reads it and it switches it automatically. No, it doesn't. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's Let's talking about. He doesn't know what he's talking about. See them side by side. Yeah, very nearly the same side lens, size lens. They're both 2.8 and they're both the same size lens. I'm very interested to see the, the comparison between the quality of these two. And there's not a lot else to say. It's got this self timer, which is interesting because it's not one of it's designed like one of those old SLR clockwork self timers, except it doesn't click when you doesn't doesn't make a sort of a a ticking noise. You just put that all the way down, and then when you take a picture, let's see how many seconds that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Smile, everyone. Hey, it works. Lovely jubbly. And uh, should we open it up? See what's inside. Yes, let's. Well, pretty much what you think. The film goes in this side. You peel it. You wind it over to there, and then shut the case, and it it just does everything else for you. Great. The Canon Sure Shot. Auto focus. Auto lots of stuff. Nineteen seventy nine. The Pentax Zoom 70. All right, I think. I think we've gone up a quality. 1986. Uh, uh, one level in quality. This camera, this has some history. This was my camera. Oh, boy, I think the from the age of about sort of 15 to 20. I, you know what? I used it afterwards, and then I gave it to my kids, and they used it. This This worked for a while, actually. I think I had this from about the age of 15 onwards. It, um, it is a zoom, and it was one of the first compact 35mm cameras to have a zoom lens, which was a big deal back then. And when you uh, turn this, this little rocket switch side to side, there we go. Amazing, 35 to 70 mils, which was a big deal back then. Okay, and it'll work out again. And if you put it here onto macro, which you need to push that green button down and then turn the switch a bit more, look what happens. It pops out, it goes back in. Okay. It, it does pop in just very slightly. Anyway. So yes, the uh, the Zoom 70, what else does it do? Let's just... There was a, there was a famous advert not very famous, but there was an advert with which had little girls on a stage band um, as uh, doing a ballet recital, and all the people, all the parents were running back and forth to try and get their picture. But uh, the smart guy with the Pentax Zoom 70 had one of these that went in and out. I do remember that advert. I remember thinking that's a cool camera. So um, let's see, flash. Can we get a flash going here? Let's see anything. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. And let's flash ourselves. Yay! Yeah. And there's the interior. There we go. And to rewind, you push this thing in. 
Lots of jiggles and whirrings. That's it. Yeah. And switch it off. Yeah. I mean, these were simple cameras. They're simple cameras, but they had a decent level of quality, to be honest. That looks about the same size lens as the other as any of the others. So yeah. Um, then this with the little this symbol here with the sun. I'm not sure actually. Ah, uh, my um, that's probably backlight. Yeah, backlight correction. It's funny how many cameras have got backlight correction. Super 8, 30, uh, compact 35 mil. They all seem to have it. Anyway, this one. Well, that's going back out into the world now. Someone's bought it. In fact, someone bought all of these. Did they get a good deal? Who knows. Let's see how much all these things cost. They got an amazing deal. Uh, if you're going to go for, uh, for them on eBay. So the Pentax Zoom 70. These are selling price. These are sold prices. This is for what, what they actually sold for. $14.95 this one went for. One bid. That was on the 29th of April. Uh, not too long ago. $14.95. The Pentax 35 AF. $54.99. Damn. Someone sold that for $54.99. Where am I going wrong? That one's the original box. $59.99. And it's sold. Look at this. 86 minutes. Are these cult cameras? Have I let go of something that I shouldn't have? <laughs> yes, I How did. How much is the uh, Canon Shaw shot? Let's have a look. 27.99. Good Lord. How can I? Maybe I should have sold all these separately. Yes, you should have. 40 pounds. 31. Spares and repair. 95p. Yeah, fair enough. But look, they're all get coming. Come on. It looks like all three of these cameras. I could have got myself like upwards of 80 pounds. But, you know, what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> sell them separately. Now, this is definitely only worth £10, the Olympus digital camera. Seeing as it's outclassed by every single phone uh, in on the market right now, by a long way. Uh, what's it got? 2.1 megapixels CCD. Now, they've tried to make that more fancy by saying 2,110,000 pixel CCD. Anyway, it comes with a whole bunch of bollocks. <laughs> Some unboxing music, please. This is from 2001, this camera. There it is. The Olympus C200 Zoom. Oh, and it pops right open like that. I mean, it is really a kind of successor of those uh, compact uh, compact 35mm cameras. Because it's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a similar size, similar shape. It's got the pop-up flash. It's got not an awful lot in the way of uh, features on the top. It's got, this is your uh, zoom, this little WT rocking that. There's the uh, take a picture button. And then on the back, it's got a screen that's not a touch screen. A very simple uh, menu, menu navigation buttons and an OK button obviously for going through the menu. So it takes four AA batteries. Oh, am I going to be bothered to put batteries into here? I don't know. So the first one is uh, nipple down and then nipple up. And I guess that's down again and then up again. Put that. Oh, it made a noise. Yay. It's a very, uh, very basic early 2000s oh look it's got a uh, it's got a little connector here for video out and usb and dc in wow you can plug this from your mains plug for some reason maybe it's for rechargeable batteries video out that'll go that'll deliver a pretty crappy image to your tv uh, analog of course and usb there well that, that, that's that's some proprietary cable business there which will go into your uh, computer but I don't see where the memory stick goes. It's on the Maybe side. Maybe it has its own internal memory. No, it doesn't. There. You see, this This takes one of these type of uh, memory cards, which slots into the side of the it's camera. taking a picture without actually putting, I consciously didn't. putting a memory card into it. Okay. No, there is a memory card in it. Oh, uh, oh, Jesus. Ah, okay. I took a picture. I'll take a picture of myself. It's very odd, this thing, because... I think it took a picture of me. It won't show you the picture while you're queuing it up, it seems. Only afterwards. Hey, there I am. Okay. All right. It took that picture. Lovely. It actually does work. Oh, God. I'm going to have to wipe these before I send this thing off. Let's take a picture down the uh, kitchen. 
we go. I just took a picture of my projector. Hey, it just took that picture of my uh, Super 8 projector. Yep, I don't know what quality this is. Probably a bit ropey. I think you'll find that those compact uh, 35mm ones are going to have a better picture quality, but you're not going to see the picture instantly, which is the whole deal about these. I've just discovered what it is, what's strange about this thing, is that to go between sort of camera mode and and uh, display mode, it's you 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 push this shield just slightly over to the left for um, watch for taking picture mode there. And now it's in now it's in taking a picture mode with the uh, with the zoom and everything. By the way, it goes to one f one point two eight. But if you push this in slightly like to there, it then doesn't take pictures anymore, and it goes into um, screen mode. There we go, and there's our screen. That was a very annoying So there picture. we go, the Olympus C200 Zoom. I wonder how much this is. I didn't even look this up yet. That's not it. There we go. Uh, parts only to £7.97. £2. Oh, oh my god. Um, £11. Oh, there we go. This one went for £11. And uh, £21, £20. Damn, these things are going for a bit more than I'm, than I'm selling them for. But there we go. Right, well, that's it then. Those are, those are my compact 35mm and uh, one digital camera. And uh, back to the live show already in progress. Take it away, me. <laughs> so, we're back. And uh, that was me on Saturday going through those cameras before I had to send them all off to a new owner. However, before I sent them off, I put a roll of film through them. That's right, I put... I took 10 pictures on one, 10, and then rewound the film, and then managed to get the film out of the, out of the capsule a bit, and then wound it through another camera, and uh, took 10 pictures on that. Anyway, I got pictures to show you. I got pictures to show you of all four of those, so we're going to do an old comparison. Um, <clears throat> the problem is, <sighs> there's always a problem, isn't it? The film I used to take the pictures, the test pictures, uh, it was a film I found inside one of the pictures. Yeah, and uh, guess what? It was highly expired. Yes, horribly expired even. Um, so in fact, when I went to the, to the photo place to pick up the photos, uh, the guy asked me, he said, was this a very old film? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, yeah, well, you're going to have, uh, you, you might be a bit disappointed in how it looks. You see, they all came out um, a little bit sort of brown and gray. In fact, I've got, I've got them scanned, so I, I can show you better here. Yeah, so, so here are how the pictures turned out. Not, not, not amazingly good, especially because I... Uh, for the amount of money they charge me. I won't tell you the name of the place I went to, but it rhymes with crappy craps. So yeah, it all looks very, uh, mm, yeah, ooh, a bit, bit expired, really. I know the look of expired film. Look, see, that was on a bright, sunny day, and it still manages to look kind of dark. Yeah, maybe I should have uh, shot it at higher, a at lower ASA. Who knows? However, not to be outdone, I don't want to disappoint my fans. Of course not. I don't even have any fans, except for uh, uh, Watch and Shoot, Alexander Mandatke and Peter Grafalnik and Tio Manny, who've, <laughs> who've bothered to make comments so far. I've got, I actually went and put these pictures into Photoshop, and I did a bit of um, uh, level adjustment, shall we say, a bit of color correction. I think I may have gone a bit too far. Um, well, you'll see what I mean here. So what I've done is I've put, there we go, I've put the name of the camera at the bottom so you can see what I'm talking about. The Pentax PC30, this is the sort of the, the angular boxy looking one. Get ready for some serious grain on these photo results. So that's the Pentax. Um, yeah, ooh, you see that's the best I could get for that particular shot. That's the Zoom 70. Again, the Zoom 70. If I'd put, um, you know, fresh film in these things they would have <laughs> pictures would have come up a lot better so that's enough of the disclaimers there's one of the digital uh that's the olympus that one took that uh rather low res digital picture that's the pentex third pc 35 
uh, AFM. Um, and uh, Pentax Zoom 70. Yeah, it's, you know, I bumped it all up, but you are going to get some serious grain. Okay, that's the digital picture. Whoa, see, there's, a, there's the Zoom 70 took that one. So digital analog, <sighs> digital analog, you know. Uh, it's not really fair to compare these, you know, it's not really comparing like with like. But here's the sure shot. Maybe compare them with each other. So that's the Canon sure shot, which, by the way, came out in 1979. When they built this camera, they were still making Super 8 cameras. They were still making the, the 814 XLS. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. So that's the sure shot. That's the Pentax. You see, its sun had gone in, so it looks a bit more uh, awful. And um, that's the digital. So, yeah, I think the sure shot probably wins out. It's a bit, I think it's a bit sharper than the others. That's the Canon sure shot again. That's the Pentax PC35 AFM. And that's the digital. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Different color palettes. The digital just looks like a really old phone, doesn't it? Uh, again, okay, I did some self timers here. I tested self timers. So it's the sure shot, the 35 AFM, and the Zoom 70. Hard to know, really. The Zoom 70 came out pretty well there. Yeah, that's a picture. It's a self a self portrait, and that's the last photo I ever took on that Zoom 70. I mean, you know, call me sentimental, but that camera and I went through a lot, and we went to all sorts of places. I believe we even went to Madagascar, and um, that's the last picture I ever took before sending it off to a new owner. And that's the digital. Obviously, you know, okay, the digital looks better than that, but you know, had I put fresh film in, it would have looked probably analog probably would have looked better. So this these results really don't tell us anything because of the the rubbish uh, film put. There's the sure shot again. You know, they work. Now that's interesting. That's where two of the pictures overlapped: the Pentax and the uh, and the Canon. Uh, which again, because they're overlapping, yeah, we 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 learn nothing. <laughs> um, Pentax 35. That's not too bad. That came out all right, apart from this like horrendous grain. I could probably get rid of that. Excuse me, I've got hiccups now. I could probably get rid of that grain in um, in Photoshop, but I didn't have a lot of time. Well, this is embarrassing. I'm going to have to be hiccuping throughout the rest of the show. There we go. So those are the results. I don't just show you the cameras. I show you the results as well. And the digital. You know what? It, you can get a better... Look at the dynamic range there. Look at the sky. It's completely whited out. Okay. And the sky here, you can see a little bit more definition. There, you can see clouds that time. See? That's the difference between film and digital, is that film can get the light and the dark in at the same time because of dynamic range. Look at the sky. So you see clouds. Digital, nothing. Yeah. And don't tell me I overexposed it, because if I, I, I just let the camera do it auto. Interesting data. <laughs> for still cameras. You know, I try and, you know, keep this show interesting um, for uh, for camera people. But, uh, you know, sometimes compact compact 35 mil cameras are, um, well, this is a, this is all I can say about them, really. In a future episode, I'll be talking about, compa about SLR 35 mil cameras. I let these cameras go for too cheap, though. Damn it, I bundled them all together in one single lot. And I should have sold them separately. But the last time I sold them separately, none of them sold. No one wanted them. And then, while I'm researching these bloody cameras, I discover that uh, apparently they're all in demands now. So, oh, well, what are you going to do? I, 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 I've freed up a lot of space for this anyway. Ah, Jake S. Del Maestro says he's a quiet fan here. Well, thank you, Jake. Thank you for, thank you for tuning in. I won't draw attention to you. Obviously, some people just like to... Uh, be silent, silent watchers of the show. In fact, I heard that a guy watches this show who is the director of photography on Game of Thrones. So uh, yeah, that's great. I love, I love getting serious professional techies involved in this show as well. Um, because obviously, the industry is in a really sorry state if this is the most professional thing you can watch to, uh, to entertain yourself. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I mean, uh, final thoughts. Final thoughts on the compact digital 30, the, I keep saying digital, the compact 35 mil cameras. Yeah, they're fun. They're really easy. You just point and shoot and click and there you go. And you've got yourself a photo. The problem is it, it cost me bloody 15 pounds to get these all developed and printed and scanned. 
it would have been nice if uh, crappy craps had uh, told me beforehand listen we scanned them and they all came out very uh, very very crappy looking and we will um you know do you still want to print them but no they printed them all up they printed they printed them like this and uh, i've got to live with that so i've got all these prints of these uh, various uh, various sort of poor quality <laughs> pictures here oh dear <laughs>